politicians are all of a sudden people. We the people. Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. I'm your host, David Dell. Today our guest is Chuck Johnson. Chuck is the director of the Nuclear Power Task Force with the Physicians for Social Responsibility, Oregon and Washington. So welcome to the show, Chuck. That's great to be here. Good, good. Thank you for being here. So what's your, what's your background with nuclear power and uh, Physicians for Social Responsibility? Well, I go back to uh, the 70s with nuclear power. I was in college and uh, people were organizing the occupations at Trojan. Some uh, viewers may remember that. Mm -hmm. And I was involved in two of those and got arrested at, at, at both of them and spent um, nearly a month in jail for the second one because I was in violation of probation. Uh -huh. From at, the first one. From the first, mm -hmm. first one. And, uh, but it was, you know, not exactly hard time. They kept uh, those of us that were there, the six uh, men that were there, in uh, with in, in our own separate isolation area to keep us from uh, indoctrinating and and uh, and uh, uh, empowering the other prisoners. Uh -huh. And uh, so it was really very easy. The only bad thing about it was that we were. We didn't get to see the sun for a month, but oh, uh, wow. yeah. But coming out of that, um, a group of us decided that we uh, weren't going to shut down Trojan with civil disobedience at that point in in '79 and and or '78, I guess it was. And then we we uh, worked in the legislature, and then by ballot measure, uh, to pass the nuclear power moratorium uh, uh, on any construction of any more nuclear plants in the state which we passed uh, by public vote in 1980. And, and that's, that's in been, the state of Oregon? Yes, right. uh -huh. and that's uh, still still the law. Uh, we, Lloyd Marbet had been uh, harassing uh, PGE with their plans for the Pebble Springs nuclear reactors, blocking them in court, and then this ballot measure uh, stopped those reactors from being built out in Arlington on the Columbia River. Mm -hmm. So that was my introduction to nuclear power, and I've been involved with a number of different organizations since that time off and on. Okay, yeah, and then Lloyd Marbet, of course, has been involved, uh, well, he's been a guest on our program a couple of times talking about uh, nuclear power and talking about Fukushima uh, and that nuclear catastrophe and, and other things. So, um, uh, so uh, Lloyd is continuing to be involved? Lloyd is, uh, you know, Lloyd, of course, continued to work on nuclear power after some others moved on to other things, and he was involved along with a number of other people in eventually wearing PGE down uh, to the point where they shut down the only operating nuclear reactor in Oregon, uh, Trojan, right. and, uh -huh. uh, back in, in uh, the early 90s. Okay. And uh, he's involved, still involved uh, on a number of issues now. Right. Yeah. And then were, were you involved with those initiative campaigns also? I was uh, back east. I was working for uh, Physicians for Social Responsibility oh. in their national office. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked with uh, people around the country. We have a chat. We had a chapter network that I that I was involved with, working with. Uh, but I wasn't working on the Trojan issue. I see. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Good. And so you're just starting now to work with with physicians for social responsibility here in Oregon. Right. Right. And your your position is going to be. Well, I'm uh, the the. Uh, Physicians for Social Responsibility has been both an anti-nuclear weapons, anti-nuclear power, uh, and an anti-nuclear power organization uh, throughout its history. And um, after Fukushima, uh, a lot of people who had been getting concerned with a variety of other issues, there's so many issues that in, in today's world to be concerned about, uh, came back to the fact that we still have an operating nuclear reactor in the Pacific Northwest, one of five that uh, Washington Public uh, Power Utilities were trying to uh, complete, uh, the Whoops uh, plants that some may remember. Oh, yeah, yes. Only one of the Whoops plants was completed, Whoops 2, which is now called the Columbia Generating Station. It's located on the Hanford Nuclear Reservation and um, 
its license was scheduled to uh, end in uh, 2023. They just recently got relicensed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to run until 2043. And so P uh, PSR wanted to uh, organize efforts to uh, shut that reactor down as, as quickly as possible, and I was very interested in joining with them on it, and they decided to hire me. And I officially start work on July 1. Oh, okay. All right. So This is both Oregon and Washington, PSR. Oh, okay. It's a joint effort. So oh, okay. Is, is that typical for how PSR works, or do they use it, or, or is that unusual? Um, I, I, it's, it's funny. Uh, PSR, in the last uh, 15 years or so, has sort of set up special projects with specific people in charge of them. And yeah, it oh. is sort of how it's, it's done things. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. And then very appropriate in this case because uh, the Hanford Nuclear Reservation and the Columbia Generating Station uh, are in Washington State, so. Right. Right, okay, all right. Um, and yet uh, also we're affected in, in Oregon because uh, it's right on the banks of the Columbia River and of course any accident that occurred there would affect us uh, greatly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. it's yeah, it's appropriate that it's both an Oregon and Washington effort. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and my understanding is that that the Columbia Generating Station, uh, which doesn't sound like a nuclear plant. Right. All oh, right. Which I, I'm I'm sure they have called it that. That's intentional. Exactly for that reason. Right. Yeah. Oh, uh, I. I um, Understand that that plant is very similar to the Fukushima plant. That's right. right. It's a boiling water reactor, a GE boiling water reactor. Um, it's what they call a Mark II. The Fukushima ones were Mark Ones, but the design problem is the same in the Mark II that, it, that uh, they discovered. A couple of design problems are exactly the same uh, as the ones at Fukushima. Specifically, um, one of the worst is that they have an elevated spent fuel pool that's uh, rather than having it at ground level they have it on uh, you know braced uh -huh. with uh, girders but not uh, meeting uh, earthquake standards they didn't uh, they didn't worry about earthquake standards for their spent fuel pools while they were focusing all their attention on the reactor. Uh -huh. um, therefore, these uh, spent fuel pools, these elevated spent fuel pools are a lot more vulnerable to uh, breaking down. And if they break down, they actually contain, there's more waste contained in the spent fuel pool currently at the Columbia Generating Station than in all of the waste tanks in uh, at, at Hanford, the ones that we're, we've been so concerned about that have been leaking. Oh. There's actually more cesium and uh, more overall radioactivity in that spent fuel pool, according to Bob Alvarez, who's someone who's studied, studied these issues. I was just speaking uh -huh. with him about this the other day, and that's, that fact blew my mind. Wow, yeah. Right. So that's, that's actually the main design flaw, but there are others. There's also a problem with vents that were sticking um, in, in Japan, the, the same types of vents on the nuclear reactor um, that we have at the Columbia Generating Station. If those vents hadn't been able to open up, um, you know, because they didn't open up as well as they should have, you have a buildup of, of uh, hydrogen gas that causes explosions, mm -hmm. and uh, potentially you could you could uh, have an explosion inside the the um, the inner part of the containment uh -huh. uh, structure, and that would be completely disastrous. Wow. You have uncontrolled release of radioactivity. Yeah. Okay. And then I was reading uh, recently that the reactor in in Fukushima there's a bulge in the wall and there's some danger at this point that um, those rods will drop down into the ocean or drop down to the earth or, or down to the earth or, or yeah right. in that case um, this is uh, that uh, reactor number four where they had problems the, the reactor itself was shut down but the spent f fuel pool was affected by the earthquake and there was some leaking of water out of it and some melting of the fuel um, at the site, and they've had to continually pour water into that um, spent fuel pool in order to keep it cool because it's leaking out. Uh -huh. And um, if that, because there's a bulge in the wall there, it may be indication that they've done some things to try and shore it up structurally, but it may be that those things are not working. Uh -huh. If that's the case, again, a massive amount of radioactivity would be released. It would be even larger than the amount of radioactivity that was released in the first 
three explosions or four explosions at, at Fukushima. Uh -huh. So we, we would be getting on the west coast an even larger dose of radiation than what we received the first time. And in Japan, it would be, you know, 10, 100 times worse. Wow. Okay. All right. And then, of course, recently there was the news story about the tuna mm -hmm. uh, that migrate from Japan and the oceans there across, across the Pacific and end up on the west coast of the United States. And they did sampling and discovered that tuna had much higher dosages of radiation. Right. Right. Yeah. Which is alarming. Yes. Um, I mean, it's already showing up. I mean, that's what's really alarming about it because this. This is not, I mean, this has only been a little over a year. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're already able to trace uh, cesium from Fukushima in tuna they're catching off the California coast, um, that's a little frightening because this, this uh, cesium will bioaccumulate. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just the, the beginning. You know, we can expect to see salmon and tuna all affected by Fukushima. So our salmon, our migrating salmon, no doubt will be carrying some cesium from mm -hmm. Fukushima as right. a result of that accident. Okay. All right. We don't know how much at this uh, point. Right, yeah, yeah, we can only speculate, but you know, since official, uh, official estimates and official uh, statements usually downplay these things, we can usually expect that they're gonna be much worse than, than what we're told they're. Yeah, you hate to have that as a rule of thumb. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, or, but, right, yeah, or reality yeah. suggests that's true. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So with, with that information, then why would the Nuclear Regulatory Commission uh, relicense um, the Columbia Generating Station? Yeah, the problem is is that there isn't any situation in which the Nuclear Regulatory Commission would not relicense a nuclear power plant. So far, they never have. They've licensed every nuclear power plant that ever applied for a license, and they have relicensed every nuclear power plant that's ever re applied for a relicense. Hmm. So, um, you know, so far they're batting a thousand, and uh -huh. uh, and there's no sign that that will ever change. Uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission was set up separately from the Atomic Energy Commission, from the old Atomic Energy Commission. It was supposed to be a separate regulatory body. And in some ways, it functioned that way at first, but it's more and more been captive of the industry. Uh -huh. And so, anyway, the thing specifically, some of the things that went wrong with this relicensing, uh, one was that they were not even allowed to reconsider the g additional ge geologic information that they now have about the site that that wasn't present in 1983 when it was first licensed. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, did, did, did you say they weren't allowed to? They were not allowed to. Okay. That was not something that was considered germane. You can't talk about that in the relicensing hearing. You can only talk about the information that was presented at the time. <laughs> so that was one, one okay. little so problem they like, had. Yeah, and they have discovered additional faulting out there. Uh, there have been some, some earthquakes uh, in, uh, you know, in the area, including some that center right on the Columbia Generating Station uh -huh. itself. Um, small ones, but uh, you know, measurable, and um, and there's additional faults that, uh, through the Hanford uh, site that they didn't know about when that plant was originally built. Now, the second thing is, is that this relicensing took place uh, pr mostly after Fukushima. You know, some of the preliminary stuff was mm -hmm. done before Fukushima, but a lot of it was done after Fukushima, and like all the plants around the country. They were not allowed to consider any additional information in the relicensing that they might, you know, any additional problems that might be known or, or looked at uh, that they discovered because of the accident at Fush Fukushima were not allowed to be wow. entered as, as evidence. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just a matter of burying your head, head in the sand and just not paying. The, the way they justify it is they say, you know, these are things that will come up. Uh, as time goes on, as the Nuclear Regulatory Commission investigates the accident at Fukushima, then it will have additional recommendations to all of its plants. Uh -huh. So, in the you know, in five or ten years, we may make some modifications at this plant. But, you know, we need to let our process run through. And this is a separate. This licensing process is a separate thing. Oh, okay. So the licensing. So potentially they could. Oh, they will probably make some changes and yeah. upgrades, or I think they're going to. Wait, I uh -huh. think there's going to be some things. It may take them forever. I mean, when you consider that, you know, <laughs> an accident uh, at a nuclear power plant 
can okay. have such consequences. Okay. You would think that they would up the timetable in terms of looking at some of these problems, uh -huh. but that's not generally how they've worked. Huh. It, it probably will take another five years before they uh, make changes to nuclear reactors yeah, okay. that are, reflect uh, okay. what they know at Fukushima. Yeah. And I understand that this relicensing uh, wasn't really required at this time. Not at all, no. Okay. No, they still had another 10 years of their license. Um, but um, reactors all over the country, utilities all over the country, have been relicensing because it's they've had a favorable um, George W. Bush administration and now a very favorable uh, Barack Obama administration mm -hmm. when it comes to nuclear power. And they felt, let's push all these relicenses through um, and uh, get them taken care of. These plants were only designed to last for 40 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was no contemplation of them running 60 years when they were originally built. Nothing in the record indicated, because they anticipated building hundreds of nuclear power plants at the time these things were originally built. Uh -huh. They were going to retire these things, because they, you know, they will have served their useful life and, and parts are breaking down and it's a time to shut them down. Because more weren't built, and because if you can somehow you know, make your old car or reactor run a little longer. Yeah. You've already you already have your um, you know your your investment paid for sure. uh, primarily. Although actually, Columbia Generating Station still has another ten years because they keep moving the bonding uh -huh. uh, backward in terms of paying for it. We still haven't fully paid for that reactor. Huh. But um, they just figure they figured well, well we can run these things another twenty years. We can replace the parts that wear out and uh, we can do it safely. Hmm. And they're gambling with all of our, our lives, okay. honestly. Yeah, and, th and this whole process is playing out around the nation. It's yeah. not just this one. Right. right, 104 nuclear reactors in the United States. Okay. So one of those, you know, in the next 30 years, um, I mean, the way it's worked is we've had three nuclear accidents since the, the dawn of the nuclear power age, three major ones. Uh, Three Mile Island, uh -huh. Chernobyl, and now Fukushima. So every you know 15, 20 years, we can anticipate another accident, and there will be another accident uh -huh. if they continue to run mm -hmm. this many nuclear reactors. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just seems inevitable. Uh, yeah. It, when was the last time a new reactor was built in the United States? Uh -huh. um, well, they, that's that's a interesting question. The last time one was licensed was in the 70s, prior to. Uh, this recent licensing that they just did for the two plants in Georgia, uh -huh. but um, it took some of them. Some of them didn't get completed until um, the 90s. Oh. Um, some of them were on a slow, the slow uh, <laughs> plan for uh, okay. construction. Uh -huh. and okay. That were constructed in fits and starts. So some okay. of them were still being completed yeah. in the 90s. Okay, and so. Uh, what what happened in Vermont? Because there was a plant there, and that's not being relicensed. What happened there? No, it is. it, it was relicensed. It was relicensed. Uh, that's the problem. It, it's an interesting situation. Um, Entergy Corporation wanted to buy a bunch of nuclear reactors around the country. Uh, they saw that, you know, some people were, some utilities were, were feeling the burden and the public pressure and deciding that they didn't want to continue to operate nuclear reactors. So Energy bought several of them around uh -huh. the country, and one of them was for Vermont Yankee. And they agreed at the time, with the, in a moment of weakness, uh, with the uh, legislature in Vermont that they would allow the state of Vermont um, final say as to whether or not the plant got relicensed. And um, the uh, governor and the legislature decided after a series of scandals and, and covered up accidents there that they didn't want to relicense it and so energy said well that's tough you know because you don't get to decide that even though we agreed before that you did uh -huh. we're going to the nuclear regulatory commission and we're going to uh, and get it relicensed and then we're going to go to court and keep you from shutting us down and that's what they've done thus far Oh, okay. Even though the public is totally against uh, that, that reactor uh, wants oh, okay. it shut down. All right. So do you think that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission could go ahead and relicense it? They have yeah. relicensed it. They have it. relicensed they it. They relicensed it about a week after Fukushima. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and the ability of the state legislature and the governor to close it down at this point is, is out the door? I mean, well, they're still in court. They are um, still in court. And, uh, 
I think there are ways to do it. Um, you, the, the main thing that makes it difficult, the Atomic Energy Act gives all the power on, on health and safety issues to the federal government. Preempts the states completely. Mm -hmm. You know, with the with some environmental laws, you can have more strong uh, uh, environmental standards and health and safety standards at the local level. Not the case when it comes to nuclear things. Uh -huh. A state has zero rights uh, when it comes to health and safety. A state has uh, rights when it comes to the financial cost. Now they could in Vermont pass a law or a ballot measure that said um, that somehow. Uh, would force the closure of that reactor if it was based on an economic argument, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. and I don't know if that's where they're going to go, but that's, that's one thing we should consider when it comes to the Columbia Generating Station, is that whether or not there'd be support in the state of Washington, which is where it would have to be, mm -hmm. for a uh, statewide ballot measure to uh, uh, close the reactor based on uh, anticipated financial costs of storing of the radioactive waste. That's uh -huh. what we based our ballot measure for future nuclear plants in the state of Oregon on. Uh -huh. And we, we based that law on a California law that had, had successfully argued that case in court. They also have a, a moratorium in, in California that's been uh, held up in court because of the financial basis of the law. So in, in, in Washington state, is there a process for citizens to be involved with the with the question of relicensing or, or very much how does that work? okay but not so much relicensing because again that's a federal process but the people in Washington uh, uniquely have the ability to decide on the fate of that reactor because it's all publicly owned utilities um, that own that reactor it's owned by Energy Northwest which used to be called Whoops, the Washington Public Power Supply System. Love that name. They, yeah, they, they, they've done a lot with their PR in recent yeah. years. Uh, you know, it's now Energy Northwest, uh -huh. and instead of Whoops 2, it's, uh, it's the Columbia Generating uh, Station. Right. Uh -huh. uh, but anyway, uh, people in those utilities, including Seattle City Light, Clark County PUD here in, in our neighborhood, and all of the Columbia River uh, PUDs um, own this reactor. Mm -hmm. And um, the voters could, could elect a board, or they can go and, and lobby their own elected PUD boards and say, uh, we'd like you to shut down that reactor. Hmm. And then those people meeting as Energy Northwest could make that decision to close it down. Oh, okay. So people have a direct, you know, they're represented by people who, who uh, run that plant. Mm -hmm. And they can either elect representatives that will support their position or lobby the current ones to get them to support their position. Oh, okay. So in terms of the amount of energy which that plant actually produces in the Pacific Northwest, what kind of percentage are we talking about? In the Northwest, it's only 4%. So it's really a small. Yeah. Right. We're mostly hydro here, mm -hmm. although we have a lot of coal as well, unfortunately. Yes, unfortunately. Um, some of that's being shut down, but we'll still have a lot from uh, Pacific Power has a lot of uh, mm -hmm. coal in the Rocky Mountains. But in terms of uh, the public uh, power, the Bonneville power, it's somewhere around 10% of Bonneville's comes mm -hmm. from uh, nuclear power. Okay. And uh, depending on how much your utility buys from Bonneville, it'll, it won't be any more than 10%, but it, it probably will be significantly less. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. It's so, very replaceable. Okay. All right. That, 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 that's, well, that's good. Uh, one right. other point oh. I want to make on that is uh, the, it was closed down for eight months last year through the summer, through the hottest months oh. of the summer. Did anyone notice? No. Okay. And that's that's the point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Uh -huh. Right, yeah. Okay, good. So, you know, one of the things that we've emphasized a number of times on this program is that we really need to be looking at renewable energy. And is nuclear a renewable energy? Uh, no, not hardly. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, I, I guess I would have a hard time looking at it as, as a clean source of energy when its uh, byproduct is one of the most deadly and long-lived uh, toxins that we've ever created. Right. Um, and in terms of renewable, I don't know. I mean, that they, nuclear advocates talk about recycling the fuel. But that when you do that, you create the kind of waste that we have in the t sitting in leaky tanks at, at Hanford. It's not a clean process, despite what some, how yeah, some try to present. As, as my understanding is that as you continue to re reuse it and reuse it, you just intensify the waste. 
Yeah, that's, that's correct. Uh -huh. right. And um, and you create a lot of uh, hazardous and toxic waste that it takes. You, you have to use solvents to get the uh, fissionable materials out. And then you end up with uh, wastes uh, that are very difficult to contain and control. Okay. All right. Yeah. This this whole waste cycle seems to be part of what's not talked about with nuclear. Very right. much. Right. Yeah. And I think we're seeing some of that in terms of the Hanford site and and uh, some uh, developing opposition to having trucks on our freeways because of. of a mixed waste, which includes nuclear, right. uh, and possibly storing that at the Hanford site. So, yeah, there's a lot of issues here. The thing about Hanford is that it, this is what makes it so difficult. There's so many hazardous things going on there. It's easy to have your focus shifted, you know, here and there. And and the Columbia Generating Station, the nuclear plant, has sort of flown under the radar mm -hmm. because of all of the other concerns that we have with the wastes that are being handled there. It really was only Fukushima that made us realize, hey, we've got the same type of reactor sitting right next to the Columbia River. Um, shouldn't we shut it down? We don't need the power. Uh -huh. You know, why don't we uh, get a campaign together and shut this right. thing down? Good. All right. Well, we will be looking for more from you on that campaign and how people can participate. So, yeah. thank, thank you. you very much for being here. Thank you. Good. And that concludes our program for today. So. If you have uh, missed past episodes of Populist Dialogues or would like to watch this episode again, you can do so. Populist Dialogues is now on YouTube. Go to youtube.com and search for Populist Dialogues. Click on the result with the Statue of Liberty icon to view all our shows for from this year and also to, to subscribe to future shows. You, they are also available on Blip. TV, B L I P dot TV. Again, search for Populist Dialogue. Subscriptions are available there also. The mission of the Alliance for Democracy is to end corporate domination, establish true democracy, and create a just society based on a sustainable, equitable economy. To learn more, visit our national website at www.thealliancefordemocracy.org or our Portland website, www.afd-pdx.org. I want to thank our crew today. Without them, we wouldn't be on the air. So thank you to Roger Bates, Joan Horton, Dave King, Beth Kerwin, and Janet Morris. And thank you for watching. And we hope that we'll see you again next week. Bye.